So today what I'm going to do is I am going to play around a little bit with my Qtile config because I need to do some tweaking to the config. I need to clean it up a little bit. I need to do a little bit of a redesign. Recently, I had to do a fresh install on my computer here at the office. So I was running Arch Linux. Well, it wasn't really running Arch Linux. It was running DTOS because I was also maintaining my own repositories of software and doing a lot of weird customization uh to Arch Linux, so I don't want to necessarily say it was Arch, it was my Arch, right? But I recently was having problems with that machine, so I formatted the drive and I installed Cache OS. So what I'm thinking about doing is, first of all, since I'm running pure Cache, I haven't enabled any DTOS repos of software, I'm thinking about getting rid of the DTOS logo and throwing Cache's logo up there, at least for a little while, because we should do some deference to Cache, you know, pay it a little bit of respect here, right? So put the Cache logo here. And then one of the things that has changed on the fresh install is the icons are a little messed up. Some of the icons are colored. Some of them are just black and white. Uh, before, I had to spend a lot of time tweaking the fonts to get the fonts right. So they were all not colored emojis. But now some of the fonts, because I didn't necessarily back up all the fonts, I get some weird fonts. Some of the sizes are a little weird, especially over here in the widgets here. Uh, some of the icons here are also colored emojis. Some of them are not colored emojis. Also the spacing, the vertical spacing is a little weird depending on the size of the icon associated with the widget. So I just want to make everything a little more uniform. So the first thing I want to do is let me switch over to Workspace 3 here and I'm going to go ahead and launch Emacs and I'm going to go ahead and navigate to where I have my Qtile config. So the Qtile config lives in your home directory slash dot config slash Qtile slash config.py. Except for me, my config.py is actually readme.org. So whatever I do to readme.org, there's code blocks here, right? This is a literate Emacs config, right? Written in org mode. These code blocks automatically get written over to the config.py when I save the file. So that's how I handle this. And the readme, though, will also serve as the actual readme on my GitLab when I push this files to my .files repository on my GitLab. So I can kill two birds with one stone doing this literate config. I write the readme. I'm also actually writing the config.py all in one document. So everything I want to do today involves the bar at the top. So I've got the table of contents here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go to widgets because that is where everything dealing with the bar is going to be in the config. And let me zoom in a little bit so you can read this. So the very first thing I have is in the widgets list. So the widgets list is this gigantic organic list of things that are here in the panel. The very first one is a spacer, so it's just an empty space of about eight pixels right here at the edge of the DTOS logo. And then the DTOS logo is actually widget.image, and it's a location to this particular ping file, just an image of the DTOS logo that I created. And then what does this do when I click it? Well, it gives me this YAD window. This is a YAD script that gives me all of my Qtile key bindings. So I want to replace the DTOS logo with a cache logo. So let me go ahead and open my web browser and let's search for how about cache OS logo. And let's see if I can find something that I can use here. There's already somebody that's maintaining a GitHub of various cache OS icons. We've got colored, we've got black, but I'm using a black bar so I need white. Here's the white icon and let's see what it looks like. I like that. Let me go ahead and save image as, and I'm going to save that in my home directory slash dot config slash Qtile. And I have an icons directory here. So let me go ahead and just save that there. And now let me go back here and change this. And I'm hoping that they're fine with the SVG file. Uh, I'm not actually sure if the bar will be fine with that format, but that was Qtile slash icons slash, and what was the name of the file? I actually don't remember. Man, and it was just a few seconds ago I was looking at that. Uh, let me actually navigate to it and go into icons. It was cacheos.svg, and there was some weird capitalization. Let's get rid of all the capitalization and just do all lowercase cacheos.svg. So that is cacheos.svg. Let's write that. 
Let me do a org babble tangle. Uh, apparently I don't have that binded right now, but let's go ahead and restart and see if I do get my new logo and I do. So it's fine with the SVG file. So now I think the next thing I want to do is if I go to the group box, so this is your groups or your workspaces, right? And this is this group of 10 icons here, right? One through nine plus zero at the end. So 10 workspaces. So super one, workspace one, super twos, workspace two, etc. And I was using different icons, which was kind of cool. But now the sizes are all messed up. Some of them are really small now. Some of them are big. Some of them are colored emojis, right? And so now I, I don't like this anymore. I need come up with a different group of icons and actually if I go to the top of my config uh, here I've got something called groups in the table of contents here and this is the group labels so I need to do something different uh, typically what I would do is I would just change all of this to just using numbers one two three four five six you know yada 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 up here and that works and, and certainly could work and matter of fact I could just go ahead and enable that just to see how it goes. Let's go ahead and make that zero, not 10 at the end. And then let me do the org babble tangle and then restart Qtile. And, you know, I'm certainly fine with this. This is not a bad look, but I think what I'm going to do instead, because I don't really need the numbers. Uh, I, I know, you know, typically I don't even look at the numbers. I don't click this. I do everything with the keyboard. So I'm thinking about just using Unicode bullets. So I think I'm going to go back to the browser. And then once again, let's do a search. I'm going to do a Unicode bullet search. And let's see what we can come up with. We're right here, the very first result, a Unicode bullet. So let's see what this would look like. Let's go back to this and let's do a new group label so actually let's just undo that one and then do a paste here now these bullets are really really small so I maybe not the bullet is there a unicode uh, circle something a little bigger yeah this right here that would be much better yeah the bullet is just way way too tiny yeah, I think that will actually work. And now I need actually to do all of this for 10 different workspaces. So what I'm going to do is let's get into a visual mode here. Let me copy that and then 9P. And I should have enough workspaces now. Now let me do the org babble tangle, restart Qtile. And yeah, and now I don't have to worry about colored emojis. So now it's just the colors of... Uh, you know, it's uh, colors I set actually in the uh, widgets group box widget. Um, if I go back to the top here and go back to the widget section, I've got group box here and then I've got the active colors, which is colors eight and the inactive, which is colors nine. I'm defining some colors uh, elsewhere in this config. So uh, the inactive color, of course, is color nine, which is the gray color, the light gray. And then the uh, active color is eight. Now the dots. Do I like the size? Well, they could be smaller. You know, I could adjust that a little bit. So maybe let's do font size. Uh, oops, let's do font size 10. Also for padding, I think uh, I think the padding is fine. Let's go ahead and write that. Let's go ahead and do an org babble tangle. Restart Qtile. Uh, yeah, I like the smaller uh, circles there now. And actually, real quick, let's just try it at font size nine as well. Org babble tangle. Restart Qtile. Yeah, I, I think I'm liking this a little bit better. Now, what about the rest of the widgets? So we've got a bunch more widgets through here. Things for, you know, CPU and memory, you know, CPU, memory, disk, volume, uh, kernel. Um, now, some of this is also using some Unicode characters, right? I specify various Unicode characters like the heart here, which is right here in front of the kernel. This uh, lightning symbol, which is right here in front of the CPU. The monitor symbol in front of the memory. This is not what this character used to look like and then this doesn't even render properly at least not here in Emacs for the memory it does render properly up here in the bar but I'm thinking I may just get rid of the Unicode characters because they're not necessarily important especially because I'm already differentiating each one of the widget boxes here by using different colors for the text so I'm thinking about just eliminating all of the icons 
So let me just go ahead and delete the icons in these uh, just to see if this looks like it's okay. If I like the look of it, I'll keep it. If not, I'll undo everything and then maybe play around with some different icons. Uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely cleaned things up, right? The fonts are now better spaced, especially vertically spaced without using the weird uh, Unicode icons that was messing up some of the spacing. Uh, obviously, not as fancy, uh, you know, if I switch over to a different workspace. But I, I really like what I did over here with the workspaces. This over here seems a, a little simplified, but I think it works. So I don't know. I, I think that's what I needed to do today. I, th I thought I was going to get some of that on camera with you guys because playing around with some of these configs, now let me zoom back out. You know, a lot of people think that configuring some of this software, like your window manager, like a Qtile or a, a i3 or Sway or Hyperland or, some, you know, stuff like that is hard. But really, this just took, I mean, really, if I wasn't recording this video, this would have took all of five minutes for me to make those simple changes. You know, it's the same thing with configuring my Emacs config, right? My text editor or Vim or configuring my terminal emulator or configuring my bash RC or my uh, fish shell config or whatever. You know, this stuff is not as complicated as what it may seem at first. And in the end, you know, I, I think the more you play around with this stuff, the more you get used to it, right? Because when I, I was a brand new Linux user, when I was a Linux noob, you know, I was like most people, right? I didn't want to get into these config files and play around with them because I thought, you know, it's too difficult. It's going to be time consuming. But the more you play around with this stuff, the more you get used to it, the more now new things don't challenge me. Even if it's a brand new piece of software I don't know much about, I'm not afraid to get in there and get my hands dirty and play around with some things and potentially break some things, but then later fix some things. Because again, it's just a habit now, right? I've gotten used to, you know, just not being afraid anymore of this stuff. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and push my new Qtile config to my dot .files repository over on my GitLab. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and add this now before I forget. So let me uh, create a commit message here. Updating my Qtile config. And then let me do that push there. And now let me go over to my GitLab. So my GitLab is over at gitlab.com slash dwt1 so that's me dwt1 and i've got a, a million repositories uh, but look for the dot files repository here and then inside the dot files repository it's basically like you're looking at my home directory right so go into my home directory dot config and then scroll down to qtel and then go to config.py so this is the latest config. Now that's actually colors.py. That's not the right file. Config.py. This is my new config. And let me verify that. Let me scroll down to the groups. And yep, the groups are all of those Unicode circles. One thing I didn't add, you guys are going to need the new icon because it was using the DTOS icon. Now I've got the cache icon available. So once again, let me uh, go ahead and add a file. So I'm going to add dot config slash qtile slash icon slash cache os dot svg oh, and i forgot to add the add so and config by the way is a git alias that i use because i use a git bear repository to manage my dot files if you're unfamiliar with how i'm managing my dot files i did a video on it like seven or eight years ago on git bear repos and how to use them to manage your dot files it's kind of complicated and you may or may not want to go down that rabbit hole but for those that want to look for that video and now let me do another commit and once again another push and now the cache os icon is also there on my gitlab take care guys peace